All right. The government's upcoming budget, it's expected to prioritize rural demand due to its crucial role in economic growth as rural areas make up a significant portion of the population. Of course, boosting their spending power can drive overall consumption and economic activity. To address this, the budget, it is anticipated to increase funding for rural schemes. For the agriculture sector, the budget will likely maintain a steady subsidy allocation, keeping the subsidy bill as projected in the interim budget. The fertilizer subsidy is set to improve management through reduced import dependency and increased domestic production. The government plans to promote nano urea and nano DAP to enhance agricultural productivity. Industries such as agriculture, fertilizers, housing will benefit from these measures. Boosted a rural income and demand, it can lead to greater consumption of goods and services, spurring growth in related sectors as well. The housing sector in particular is poised to see a rise in demand as housing subsidies make homes more affordable for the urban poor. For consumers, these budgetary measures mean improved access to affordable housing, stabilized food prices and enhanced agricultural output leading to greater food security and economic stability. The focus on rural and agricultural sectors in the budget aims to foster sustained economic growth and improve the living standards of a large segment of the population. All right, for more on this, we're now being joined by Andrew Holland, CEO of Vendors Capital Public Markets Alternate Strategies, LLP, live from Mumbai. Thank you so much for joining us on World Business Watch. My pleasure. Thank you. Anasa, what's your assessment of India's rural economy and its importance from a global perspective? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, you'd want to see, you know, the kind of um, rural economy starting to pick up because then you get increased spending power. Uh, you move uh, people up the, 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 the value chain going forward. I think what, you know, what the world looks at is your per capita GDP, which is running around two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000. And if that continues to increase and the bottom starts to move up as well, then obviously the demand for goods and services, um, you know, moves from the lower end, keeps moving up in terms of the higher value products. And, and that's what the, um, you know, that's what global investors would be looking at on a longer term picture. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, but obviously, you know, with, with so many uh, people under the age of, um, you know, uh, under the age of 30 in India, this is the spending power, which I think everyone's getting you know, very excited about. So helping the rural economy pick up, I think, is not a bad thing. But I, I don't think it's an overnight win for domestic consumption. Uh, all right. So that being said, do you think the subsidy bill will be more or less as projected in the interim budget? Yeah, I think so. I, th I, I think there'll be, you know, maybe some more, I, I, as you mentioned in your in your run up to to to, uh, to introduce me in that, you know, there could be more money spent towards uh, affordable housing because you know, that has a multiplier effect across a lot of uh, industries you know if you have a new house and you want to paint it you want to furnish it and you've got to buy electrical goods so it has that multiplier effect across different uh, industries as well so that would be where i would see the the, the bigger bang for your buck in terms of uh, you know, getting the rural economy moving and of course you know that would lead to other disposable income in terms of uh, you know in autos maybe more two wheelers than four wheelers all right. Now, just for more clarity on this, which sectors do you think will benefit the most if rural demand does pick up? I would, I would have, um, you know, kind of a basket of stocks uh, to to play on this. Obviously, I'd go for the some of the FMCG stocks, which um, you know are more kind of geared towards rural economy uh, and the pickup in demand uh, in in terms of the spending power. But if it's going to be more towards affordable housing, then I'd be looking at the paint companies um, and the furnishing and, and kind of, um, um, you know, electrical kind of goods sector as being the ones which would be the bigger beneficiaries here. All right. Well, Mr. Horan, thank you so much for joining us on World Business Watch with your insights on this. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.